Okay, this problem is number six from the 2012 AP Physics B exam, and is dealing with sound. And there's gonna be a lot of a lot of sentences and not a whole lot of math here, so I'm gonna say most of it out loud instead of writing it all out for time purposes. But let's just grab the setup. We have a uh, sound generator over here. We have a speaker as gonna allow what it generates to get sent outward. You've got a microphone attached to a waveform display so we can see what wave is taking place from the speaker. We've got a tube that's going to allow the sound to travel down. There's a movable piston there that's going to act as a closed end to allow the sound wave to, to bounce back. And uh, we have a meter stick here to allow us to measure the length L. And so A wants us to describe a procedure using the apparatus that will allow us to determine the speed of the sound in the air. We've got to indicate all kinds of things like what we're going to measure, and what instrument we're going to be using, etc. And then for B, we want to use the symbols defined in part A, i.e., the variables, indicate to indicate how your measurement will be used to determine the actual speed of sound. I'm going to do A and B together, and if you uh, took the AP exam, you probably did as well. Uh, they just go together. I could write A out separately and then repeat some information to explain B, but I'm just going to put it together in one one statement. And so, really, it, to do this, you've got to really indicate, you've got to be pretty specific, but without going over the top. For example, indicate that you're going to use the sine wave generator to create a wave of a given frequency. That'll be a set frequency that won't vary. You need to indicate the adjustment of the, pi of the piston to move that piston until we start to get resonance. And what I would indicate, actually, is that the piston will start all the way on the left end, and we're going to move it out to the right until we start to detect resonance. And resonance takes place, uh, you can tell using your ears, you'll hear uh, more noise. It's going to be a very clear, distinct sound. Uh, but you can also tell by looking at the waveform generator, and you're going to detect resonance by seeing a standing wave of constant maximum amplitude. So once we get that nice, pretty amplitude wave in that waveform, generator, waveform display, we have resonance. At other spots, you're going to get reflection. You're just not going to get that pretty standing wave. So state in your, your wording for your procedure to start with the L at zero and move the piston outward until we get our first detection of resonance. Indicate that you're going to use the meter stick to measure that length L and have an actual finite value. Indicate how L is related to wavelength, and then finally indicate how wavelength is related to frequency and the speed of sound. For that, I would utilize an equation. I would indicate here that the speed of any wave is equal to the frequency times its wavelength. You then need to also recognize that this is a single closed end tube, and you get that relationship of lambda equaling 4L over N. Uh, let me just kind of briefly remind you of why that's the case. For the smallest possible frequency, which is your fundamental, you're going to always have an anti-node at the open ends of tubes and a node at the close end of a tube. And if you were to allow that wave to continue being made, you will find that that's actually a quarter of a wavelength long. And I did a terrible job at drawing that wave just now, but uh, here would be half a wave here would be half a wave. And so the wave that exists inside that closed tube is only a quarter of a wave. Which means if this is L, uh, L is one-fourth lambda, or lambda is 4L. The N is the particular um, harmonic that you're hearing. And since in this example we started at 0L, we're really hearing the first harmonic, so we're going to call N1. So ultimately, now we're in the B territory, how our measurements are going to be used to determine the experiment of the speed of sound? Well, that simply should be indicated that it's going to be F4L or 4FL. And that'll be your fundamental. A and B combined, once you explain all those things that I said to explain, will be worth six whole points. You're going to lose points if you forget some of those or are not detailed enough. C now is saying that we would like this experiment to be more accurate by having repetition and by utilizing an analysis of a graph. 
So we want to indicate which quantity we can vary, and then ultimately which quantity will also vary as a result, and how we can graph those data using that graph to then find uh, your speed of sound. And it, it's easiest to look at this new equation if you see here that v is f lambda, or lambda f, and you understand that lambda is related to L, oops, that's supposed to be an F. If you see here that lambda is related to L, you can start to get an idea of how we can graph these two together. And so we want a linear graph, so we can use that to calculate the speed of sound accurately. And to make this linear, we want to graph these two variables because we're going to basically vary F to see how wavelength changes. And we can't vary dependently or not the speed because the speed won't change. That's what we're trying to find, the speed of the sound in air. So the speed for all manipulations of F and lambda will be the same. So we've got to vary these two variables. And we're going to directly vary frequency. And so that's going to go down on my X dimension because that'll be the independent variable and my y is going to have the wavelength. And so we can do one of two things. Says when we graph something, the slope we're looking for is going to be the rise over the run. And so if I want my slope to represent v, I'm going to need to be able to divide my rise over my run. And right now I've got a product here, so I'm going to just do a little bit of you know, simple math. Instead of having my x dimension having frequency, we're going to graph 1 over frequency. And so my x dimension will be 1 over f, and my y dimension will be lambda, such that then my slope will equal my rise, my lambda, over my run, my frequency. Well, when I divide by 1 over f, it's the same thing as multiply my reciprocal. Hence, the slope will indeed be the speed of sound. Again, make sure you follow everything it says in here. Clearly identify your independent and your dependent variables, etc. Show how we're going to use the slope to represent the speed of sound. And that's your final four points.